The decision by the Mercedes pit wall to bring Lewis Hamilton in for a fresh set of intermediates with just 8 laps to go, relegating him from 3rd to 5th, was the big talking point of the Turkish Grand Prix. But while that choice, which Hamilton disagreed with both during the race and several hours later having had time to reflect on it, potentially cost him as much as 5 points, the real strategic mistake came earlier on. And this time, it was a decision that Hamilton was the driving force behind. With Max Verstappen retaking the lead of the World Championship by 6 points, the fifth time this has changed hands in 2021, this is one of the most tantalising what-ifs of a thrilling season, and one that could prove significant if Hamilton loses out by a narrow margin. So what exactly did Mercedes get wrong? What might it have cost? And what would have happened had Hamilton been allowed to run to the end without a change of tyres? Let us know in the comments what you made of the strategic decision and who you are tipping for the World Championship. The Turkish Grand Prix was always going to be a struggle for Hamilton given he headed into the weekend with a 10-place grid penalty. This was the result of taking a new internal combustion engine because of reliability concerns. Unlike Verstappen's back-of-the-grid penalty at Sochi, Hamilton had the advantage of only having to change the V6 itself because the rest of the available power unit components are, as Toto Wolff put it, in wonderful shape and easily within the mileage limits. This meant he was able to start the race 11th, having set the pace in qualifying, only for the penalty to deny him what should have been his 102nd F1 pole position. He made rapid progress in the early stages, climbing to 5th on lap 14 by overtaking Pierre Gasly. But then, the hard work began, with a 7.5 second deficit to Red Bull's Sergio Perez to make up. By lap 30, Hamilton was with Perez, and he briefly got ahead of him at the start of lap 34, but ultimately lost out in a thrilling wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. He was released into clear air when Perez pitted on lap 37, and it was in this phase of the race that the strategic error was made. By this stage, both leader Valtteri Bottas and second-placed Max Verstappen had stopped, but retained a track position advantage over Hamilton. Charles Leclerc led, and was still on his set of starting intermediates and considering the possibility of running to the end. With those who had stopped for fresh intermediates running between half a second and a second per lap quicker than Hamilton, he was called into the pits late on lap 41 by race engineer Pete Bono Bonington. On the following lap, having been told about the pace of the cars that had stopped, Hamilton repeated his belief that he should stay out. He was told he could stay out for another lap while Mercedes considered its options. Mercedes then committed to letting Hamilton run. Pitting at that point would have minimised the time lost to his rivals who had stopped, and certainly once Leclerc had pitted later, left Hamilton in fourth place. He would then have had the chance to attack Perez for a potential third place finish. Given Bottas and Verstappen were out of reach, the team felt third place would have been the best case scenario with this approach, and that explains the willingness to go with Hamilton's suggestion of staying out. The logic of what Wolff called the more dynamic strategy variant was that it offered two scenarios that could potentially have secured a better result. The first is that the track would dry up enough to force everyone onto slicks, meaning Hamilton would have effectively cut out a pit stop and gained ground. The other scenario was that Hamilton could have run to the finish on his starting set of intermediates. With a track never dry enough for slicks, this was the scenario that presented itself, with Hamilton moving up to third place when Leclerc abandoned his attempt to go to the end, having been passed for the lead by Bottas. But with the aged intermediates inevitably struggling for pace, although Hamilton was still lapping in the high 1 minute 34, low 1 minute 35 second bracket, he was called in on lap 50 to ensure he covered Gasly and rejoined in fifth place. Hamilton still didn't want to stop, but acquiesced to the team's instruction. With the need to go through a 4-5 to five lap graining phase and the overheating problems of fresh intermediates, Hamilton was unable to lap as quickly as hoped in his 8 lap final stint and couldn't challenge Leclerc for fourth. As a result, he lost 8 points to title rival Verstappen and the World Championship lead.
While stopping as originally instructed on lap 41 would likely have allowed Hamilton to finish fourth, or perhaps even third, the tantalising question is whether he could have stayed out as he wanted to. Indeed, Alpine driver Esteban Ocon did just that, and was rewarded with 10th place. The first question is whether the tyres would have lasted given they were in visibly bad shape after they were taken off the car. Pirelli's Mario Isola, based on an initial look at the cars, answered the question of whether they would have lasted with no, or at least it was really on the limit. As for Ocon, he felt that he would have suffered a puncture if he went one more lap, which in his case would have been 58 laps as he finished a lap down. Of course, drivers always say it was a case of one more lap when things are marginal at the end of the race. It's true that Ocon's tyres were in bad shape, just as Hamilton's were, but the race's technical expert Gary Anderson, no stranger to successful strategic gambles in F1, felt they would have made it having studied photos of the tyres. Mercedes was aware of the risk of a tyre failure, which would have dropped Hamilton much lower than fifth, and also the danger of the pace completely vanishing, and either having to abort the run to the end with a couple of laps to go, and dropping outside the top five, or being passed on track. But where would Hamilton have finished had Mercedes rolled the dice? It's impossible to know for sure, but by using Hamilton's pace relative to Ocon in the ten laps before his pit stop, it is possible to create a notional lap time for him had he continued. These calculations actually produce a race time 2.458 seconds quicker than his real race time. However, that makes no difference to his finishing position as he is still fifth between Leclerc and Gasly. But there is another factor that has to be considered that neither this calculation nor the live strategy tools used by Mercedes can be precise about – how well Hamilton might have been able to defend against Perez and Leclerc. They would both have had to pass him on track, and it's not impossible Hamilton could have stayed ahead, at least of Leclerc, given the tyre troubles the Ferrari driver was having, but it would have been very difficult. Speaking a couple of hours after the race, having had the chance to understand the bigger picture, Hamilton reiterated he would still have stayed out and taken the gamble. We will never know for sure how it would have played out. The real strategy error came earlier, but having committed to the path of running longer, it's a shame we will never know what would have happened had Hamilton taken that strategy all the way. Given how similar the race times were and the associated risks, it's hard to argue with the decision Mercedes made, even if Hamilton will always wonder if he might have picked up a couple more points had he been left out there. Let us know in the comments where you think Hamilton would have finished had he run to the end on one set of tyres, and if Mercedes should have allowed him to do so. And if you enjoyed this look at how the Turkish Grand Prix played out, make sure you like and subscribe.